15th of June 1940, on the day that Paris fell during World War II, leader of the Soviet Union, Joseph Stalin, presented an ultimatum to Lithuania to admit an unlimited number of troops and to form a government acceptable to the USSR. Lithuania was occupied that day. President Somota fled to Germany and a people's government was installed. In the next two days, similar ultimatums were presented to Latvia and Estonia, both which experienced similar fates. And skipping a short duration of the German occupation during the early 1940s, this was the beginning of the Soviet Union's foothold in the Baltics. Life quickly changed to the Soviet model. Property was nationalised, their economy were integrated into the general Soviet system, and mass industrialization of the areas, especially Lithuania, took place during the 1950s. There was a push to eradicate all vestitudes of the period of independence, one element was the national flag of the nations. Out went the coloured palettes of Lithuania's green, red and yellow, dropped was Latvia's red and white triband, and lowered was Estonia's white, black and blue flags, all replaced with very similar looking uniformed red flags with hammers and sickles, with names or initials very similar to other Soviet styles. Gone was the uniqueness and the identities of these three nations. In was the one ruling Communist Party of the Soviet Union, like a collective hive of the Borg from Star Trek. Doing so well until that point, sorry. In 1953, a minimalist element of the individuality was given to all the Soviet style flags. And it's here that I pass over to Flag for Contents Andy to pick up these new designs from a Baltic perspective. Do, do you like my hat? What's up, Vexheads, and welcome to the part of the Big Baltics Bonanza that Tareth asked me to do for some reason. Can't say. Uh, in any case, a short history lesson first. From 1940 to 1990, the Baltics were occupied by, you guessed it, the Soviet Union. Other than a brief little period in the 40s that we don't need to talk about because we don't want to get Tareth banned. So let's say 40 to 90. In any case, the SSRs initially technically had their own flags, but they were all just variations on a theme. It was the hammer and sickle in gold, top left in Canton, with either the name or the initials of the SSR around it. However, when the United Nations was formed in 1945, the Soviets found they had a branding problem. See, the Belarusian, Belarus, and Ukrainian SSRs were founding members, and since it was so difficult to tell their flags apart, the, let me get this right, Presidium of the Supreme Soviet of the USSR issued a resolution calling uh, for all Soviet republics to adopt new flags. And to help um, gently nudge them that way, they set a mandatory starting point that is as follows. Anyway, comrades, as I was saying, the main body shall be red for the Union Republics. The hammer and sickle with the red star above them will be up at top, and then you guys can have a third of the flag to play with. Don't get too crazy with it. Keep it simple. Let's all just be simple. Thanks for that, comrade. Now let's get back to the flags themselves and start where I like to start, in the south. The flag of the Lithuanian SSR was modified from its initial version on July 15th, 1953. The top, as you see behind me, is two-thirds red with the mandatory hammer and sickle and red star, while as in all SSRs, they had one-third of the flag to play with. Lithuania went with green and white, uh, to symbolize their wide fields and forests, which is something that no one else has. It's truly unique to them. And that's supposed to represent their agricultural and forestry industries. This flag was banned in Lithuania in 2008. Moving one republic to the north, we get to the Latvian SSR. And as you can see behind me, what they did with the lower third on theirs was add the rippling waves of the Baltic Sea. They also beat the other two Baltic states to the punch by dropping their new flag on January 17th, 1953. Moving north one more time, we get to the Estonian SSR. They got the silver medal by dropping their hot new flag on February 6th of that same year, 1953. And what they ended up doing was taking that third that they could play around with and raising it ever so slightly to add some red underneath it, which differentiates it from the Latvian SSR, 
and they made the waves look a little bit angrier, presumably because they were mad they got to the water motif second after Latvia. But what do the hammer and sickle represent? The symbol itself goes back to 1918, when Yevgeny Ivanovich Kamzolkin proposed a hammer and sword, which was changed to a sickle because Lenin, who had just wrapped up a war that killed 7 to 12 million people, wanted to move a little bit away from the military connotations. The hammer and sickle stood for the alliance between the industrial workers and factories, the hammer, and the more agrarian peasantry, the sickle. Together, as shown in the symbol, they had more power than they did separately, and combined they were the proletariat. Over the years, this symbol became internationally recognized as one for Marxist, communist, and socialist states, and even had a few spin-offs in other national flags around the world. And it's here that Tarith asked me to name my favorite of the three, which was more difficult than I thought. The last time I talked to him, I had expressed that the Latvian SSR was my favorite, since I liked the waves and I thought the white line did a good job of separating the red field from them. But then I thought, well, doesn't the Estonian one kind of do that, but in a more interesting way? I mean, I can absolutely appreciate how they differentiated themselves by moving the third up a bit and making the waves pointier, but then there's that red on blue at the bottom, which I do have a problem with in every flag that's not my own. So, Honestly, at this point, I think Lithuania is my number one. It's clean, it's green, and it won't go unseen in a crowd, especially given the strange Soviet predilection toward blue as an accent color. I think the Lithuanian SSR not only holds up on its own, but is actually among the best of all the SSR flags, which you can probably take with a Druskos Grudelis, and I'll leave it at that, comrades. And you can catch more from Andy on his YouTube channel, link in the description. The Baltics were the last three countries to join the Soviet Union, but they were also the first to leave. As Mikhail Gorbachev attempted reforms in the latter half of the 1980s, Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia saw this as a weakening in the central power structure in Moscow. This is all very important. And so they pushed for independence. Elections were held in March and May of 1990, and they were deemed illegal by Moscow, who tried various sanctions against the three countries, and eventually a military action. But an attempted coup in Moscow in August 91 moved troops away from the Baltics, who joined the United Nations in September 1991, solidifying their breakaway from the USSR and the eventual collapse altogether of the Soviet Union. Some say started back in 1986 with the disaster of Chernobyl and the following disastrous handling of the incident by Moscow. But that's obviously a whole nother story. And so the Baltic countries returned to their heritage, symbols, flags, all reinstated once more and all fly with pride to this day in free, independent, sovereign states. Members of the European Union and NATO, it seems that these three countries have solidified their futures to follow the paths that they choose and be the nations they want to be. But where did the current flags come from? Why is Latvia different from Lithuania and Estonia's tricolour designs? To answer these questions on a wobbly camera and more, you're going to need the Big Baltics Bonanza playlist be seeing you. Mm -hmm.